Hi everybody, welcome back. Now in a previous video, I teamed up with uh, GSU Asa and I gave you some frequently asked questions about leisure batteries. Now, one of the topics that I didn't discuss in any detail was the charging of leisure batteries, because in actual fact, the whole conversation of charging batteries deserves its own video in its own right. And so today, you've probably guessed it, this is that video. There are in fact, four separate ways to charge a leisure battery. So let's go through those in turn. The first method is from the tow car. If your tow car towing electrics are wired correctly, then it's likely your car will be able to provide some charge to the caravan leisure battery, but only whilst the engine is running. It's not an ideal situation if you need to fully charge the leisure battery, and it's not guaranteed that your tow car will charge the leisure battery at all. You see, depending on the tow bar electrical wiring, this method may not be possible. For instance, some modern tow car kits do not have pin 10 connected on the 13 pin plug, so no running of the fridge and no charging of the battery in the tow car. This can be checked, however, by a competent mechanic or even better, a qualified tow bar fitter. The next option is via the caravan. When your caravan is plugged into the electrical hookup on the site, the caravan will in fact charge your 12 volt battery. It does this with a crude charger that works like a power supply, giving a constant voltage at a low current to effectively trickle charge the battery. So you may ask yourself, if your caravan can create the 12 volt supply from being plugged in from the 230 volt electric hookup, do you actually need a leisure battery at all? Well, many of the systems on board a caravan require 12 volts. Your water pump, your heating, your hot water, your fridge, your USB sockets, your radio, your TV amp, all require a 12 volt supply. Now, as I mentioned before, the onboard charger is essentially a power supply. It runs in a very primitive and a very crude way. It supplies a 12 volt supply at a low current to the battery. It's not really designed to power things like your water pump, your hot water, your heating, your fridge, your whatever it is that requires 12 volts. It is in fact the leisure battery which supplies the power to those devices. The charger simply replenishes the energy used in the battery. So the ultimate answer is yes, you do need a leisure battery in a caravan or motorhome. The next solution is solar energy. Solar panels mounted to the roof or placed in the windows are a great way of supplying a charge to the battery, and they are also more intelligent than the caravan built-in battery charger. Solar panels themselves can create a voltage of up to 21 volts, and they need to be connected to a controller. These controllers supply the correct voltages to the battery and switch off when it senses the battery is fully charged. There are two main types of solar chargers, PWM and MPPT. This video is not about the differences or which one is best, but look out for that in a video in the near future. Now here's the caveat. You won't find a battery manufacturer in the world that will endorse a solar power system. And that's because there's too many variables from the style of controller to the weather, to the quality of the components used in the system. Now, I'm sure you might've seen that the price for controllers, panels, and installations is dropping all the time when dealing with solar panels. And Yuasa have advised me that they've seen a worrying trend of damage and problems with batteries caused by very badly maintained or very badly constructed solar controllers. So from our perspective, use a panel manufacturer which you know and trust. Personally, we're using the Truma system with their controller, and that's been absolutely fine. And if you're interested in having a solar installation put onto your caravan, you know, do your research, have a look to see what other people are recommending. And certainly talk to a dealership or a caravan uh, engineer who will be able to advise you better. So the fact is that battery manufacturers only really support one way of charging their products, and that is using a smart battery charger. Smart chargers are the best way to charge a leisure battery. They are smart because they perform many steps in charging the battery, and by clever electronics, they also detect if the battery is damaged and can sense what the battery needs in terms of voltage and current. In fact, a smart charger can undo some damage that has been caused by either undercharging or prolonged periods of discharge. So to better explain what an eight stage charger does, let's go through the separate steps. After connecting the charger to the battery, the first step is desulfation, or cleaning to you and me. By pulsing the current and the voltage, the charger can remove sulfate on the plates inside the battery, thus restoring the battery capacity. It is worth noting, however, that only light levels of sulfation can be reversed on a battery that has been discharged for a short period of time. A battery that's been discharged for any long period of time can never be repaired. The charger now moves on to stage two, where it tests if the battery can accept a charge. 
If the battery cannot accept a charge at this stage, it's clearly defective and will need replacing. The third step is the bulk charge, and the battery is charged with a maximum amount of current and will charge the battery to 80% of its capacity. The fourth stage is absorption, and at this stage the charger will continue to charge the battery but with reduced current to get the battery to its 100% charged state. An important step of charging any battery is to analyse if the battery is in a good state, and that's exactly what takes place at step 5. The charger will wait to see if any of the charger is placed into the battery is leaking out. A battery that cannot hold its own charge will need replacing. The battery can be reconditioned if it has not been used for some time, and step 6 increases the voltage to create gassing inside the battery. Gassing effectively mixes up the battery acid, and gives restored energy back to the battery. Once charged, the battery can be left on the charger for float management, to keep the battery topped up. To keep the battery fully charged, the pulse maintenance step will keep the battery charged between 95 and 100%, or when the battery really needs it. The charger will achieve this by pulsing the battery with voltage and current until the battery is back to being fully charged. Right, and a final point about charging a battery in the real world. Now, I used this smart battery charger to charge the battery in our car. Uh, it did a good job. I saw it go through most of the steps when it was charging a battery. I won't lie, I didn't stand there watching it like a geek, but it did a good job nonetheless. And I will say this, when I turned the key on the car the next morning, it certainly turned over a lot quicker than it usually does. So it obviously did something to the car. The point is I'm making here is that I did that in situ in the car and it was absolutely fine. However, I certainly wouldn't do it in situ in the caravan. You see, we've already got an onboard charger. We've got other systems here as well, including solar panels. So if you're going to charge it in the caravan, I would disconnect at least one terminal away from the caravan, possibly both, so it's isolated away from the caravan itself. Then use the smart charger and give it a little treat. Right, and so my top tip is this. If your caravan is only ever used on electric hookup, even if you have a solar panel, once every now and again, treat your battery and charge it up with a smart controller. It will undo some of the damage that's been caused by undercharging. It will give the battery a 100% charge and it will also prolong the life of your leisure battery. Right, and that's it from me today. A huge thank you to Yuasa who have been absolutely awesome in answering some of my technical questions. And it's been a real eye-opener, a genuine eye-opener. I would have never even considered a smart controller before now, but now that I've used it on the car, and in fact I've used it on the caravan, it's actually been quite a big eye-opener. So that's what I'm taking away from this. I hope it's been useful for you as well. Please do hit the subscribe button, hit the notification icon, and if you're in the mood, why not consider becoming a member of our channel for exclusive content and giveaways. So until next time, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you very soon. Take care now. Bye-bye.